Hi, it's Valerie of Our Homeschool Castle. In today's video, it's a collaboration with some of my homeschool mama friends. And we're sitting around having a little chat. <laughs> Let's go. I wish that my courage was a never drying well. Anxiety, just a memory from some dark hell. So this is a collaboration hosted by me and we have a list of questions here that I wrote out and I just like to have these little chats once in a while where we can hear different perspectives, different, you know, ways of homeschooling or just get to know some of our favorite YouTube homeschool moms. This collaboration is with all of my secular homeschool mom friends. So Make sure to watch the playlist below and kind of, you know, hang out with us for a minute. So if you're new to me, hi, my name is Valerie. I am a secular homeschooling mama to five kids. I have disabled children. I have autistic children and ADHD kids, as well as myself being autistic and ADHD. Mamas do matter too in the whole homeschooling configuration on how things work. And we are eclectic, we are child-led learning, unschoolers, however you want to say that. Plus, we do curriculum, we do some online websites as well as online like apps and stuff like that. And classes, we've signed up for some online classes. We have a variety of things that we do. We love nature, we love art, a lot of it is art-based. We also learn sign language. ASL is something that we have added and it really has helped in communication and homeschooling and confidence and everything. So I really love teaching my kids ASL. So what I like to bring to the table, <laughs> what I like to bring to YouTube, is how we homeschool like in our own unique way. I know everybody is unique, but in our own unique way because of the autistic and ADHD piece that a lot of people have who struggle or have questions or need more community or just need more clarification on like, how do I do this, you know? So I have my channel so that I could reach more people and hopefully share our experiences to inspire rather um, your homeschooling. I just rambled a whole bunch. <laughs> so my kids are from ages 13 to 5. So I have 5, 7, 8, and two 13 year olds. And everybody does things differently. I mean, we... I try to combine some things where I can, <laughs> but for the most part, we, you know, mix and match and everybody has their own little uh, curriculum or, you know, school plan, I guess is what I would say. Uh, we also do, I forgot to mention, of course, we go on field trips and we go out and we have co-ops and we have enrichment program. I mean, there's a lot. So during the summertime is kind of the planning phase although we school year round because learning happens all of the time. And, but we don't really get heavy into the curriculum and whatnot until, I mean, kind of like fall, you know, the beginning of the quote unquote school year. Uh, Cause a lot of the curriculum is like, you know, a certain amount of weeks and everything like that. So we like to start it in the fall. So one of the questions is share something new in your life, homeschool or not. What's new with us? Is that we're moving <laughs> still in the same state we are in Colorado but we're just moving you know someplace else in Colorado and because of that things are kind of on hold and that's good because it's summertime it's supposed to be fun time anyways and what's funny is when you start packing and you put things away and the house becomes less cluttered then the kids are like, oh, what's this? Let's play with this. Let's get into this. <laughs> and then it becomes a huge mess. So, and my kids have unpacked a few boxes and played with some boxes. And that's just part of it. And it's hard. I can say that it's very difficult, but at least we have planned it around, you know, the fact that we have four children who need round the clock care. So... <laughs> 
we try to um, just accommodate where we can and try not to get so stressed out. <laughs> it's just funny, right? <laughs> because <laughs> if you have kids like that, it's like, oh my gosh, this is so stressful. But, you know, I feel like it helps them to also be kind of busy and and keeps them busy because they are finding new things to play with. And I can hopefully pack here and there. I have a moment right now where I'm filming this video. So <laughs> I feel kind of uh, privileged right now. <laughs> so why that's so exciting moving, it's like we can now explore some new groups maybe or some new community in our new area and you know that's fun and maybe just explore some new places to go to so it's exciting actually it's really exciting <laughs> so another question is favorite company or curriculum that jives with your family really well and why so I actually have been looking at curriculum because we do use it a little bit here and there and I really love Blossom and Root. I talk about Blossom and Root a lot <laughs> in my other videos. We've also used Build Your Library, which I love too. But just by how my younger ones are learning since they're seven and eight and five, they're just now kind of getting into some of the curriculum and they already know how to read, they know how to do math, they know how to write and stuff like that. So it's really in what direction are we wanting to go? And like I said before, we are into nature and art. And I really love Blossom and Root, and I'll do a whole video on the curriculum that I got. I got second grade, and I have had kindergarten, and I believe first grade too. So I'll have to go and look. But anyway, I will totally do a video on them and why I love them. One of the reasons is that it's nature-based. It's really kind of, it gives you just enough to go on with reading. It's behind, you know, literature and all these really wonderful books and then you can build from there there are different categories like for the for the learner who just likes visuals so there's links to different videos you can watch for the learner who likes the morning basket routine there are books that you can read i love that there's options i mean it's not just like a one family this is how our curriculum is this is how it goes kind of thing it gives like categories like if this is your family here's some suggestions and oh I just love it I don't know if people are into that I know there's some people who just want to know exactly how to do it they do give that to you but I like the wiggle room <laughs> and feel like we're really getting something out of this so yeah I will definitely do a review once I get it and print it and everything and let you guys know but yeah Blossom and Root is really one that jives with our family <laughs> So this one's probably been talked about quite a lot. <laughs> Your favorite thing about homeschooling? Oh my gosh, I cannot even tell you. There's probably a million different things. <laughs> That's our favorite thing. But obviously one of our most favorite things is just freedom and freedom with our time, freedom with what we can learn and what we want to learn, freedom of just our choices, freedom of okay, today we're going to go, you know, see a movie <laughs> or today we're going to go do a field trip or whatever it is. It gives us, you know, so much time together to learn and read and, and grow our relationship with your kids. You know, there's, oh my gosh, I don't know what my favorite thing, the, the fact that we can just do like a nature-based curriculum or a nature-based schooling or, oh, my kid's like really into rats or something like that. And they want to learn all about rats. That was, a, that was this morning. You can tell that that's why it's on my mind. And they're like, you can have a pet rat, you know. Anyways, so we went down this little road about what that meant and how long they live and how do you get one and how do you take care of one. Not that we're getting one, you guys. <laughs> we already have a puppy. That's enough. Uh, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like. They just like, they get interested in something and we just go down that road and we learn about that animal and we learn about whatever it is. My kids love animals. So that's kind of a lot of our topics. Just the freedom to do that and have that time where it's not like, you know, you get up now, you go to this class now, you come home now, you have homework now, you have this, that and the other. Oh my gosh, I couldn't imagine. But, you know, just the freedom to do what we want to do is 
is huge, especially when you have children who are disabled, who have autism, who, you know, have a hard time physically or mentally getting prepared for things. I also have a daughter who has Dravet syndrome, which is a rare genetic disease. And just, you know, controlling seizures and having, you know, quiet time and having this time. And I mean, it means the world to us. And we are very grateful that, you know, we're able to do this. We love homeschooling. <laughs> so it says to share an example of a good day. And I can definitely say a good day is not necessarily like going out and going, you know, to like the zoo or something, although that could be a fun day. But really when, when somebody, one of my kids comes up to me, my son came up to me and he said, mom, I really want to learn math. I really want to have a math class. And I was like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> like I was so shocked he said that to me, um, but he was able to express that. And I looked it up for him. I sat with him and we did that. And it was so, he was so happy. He was so thrilled. And he was listening to these long lectures about math, which is very much his personality. To me, that's a really good day. When my kids get their needs met and they, they explore something that they really want to learn and they actually absorb it, you know, <laughs> or just having like one-on-one -on -one time. That's a good day too with one of my kids where we can go out and just be together. And even if we could just go to the store together and have these like conversations where you can really get into, you know, what their mindset is and how, you know, they want to learn or what they want to do or I mean, just anything. And to me, that's a really good day. And I do kind of divide and conquer a lot of times like one kid would be preoccupied doing something while I focus on one we have we do things a little differently I'm sure than a lot of people but that's how we have found that it works out for everybody if you know you get free time right now to go on your tablet while I focus with this kid that's a really good day when everybody jives and everybody gets their needs met is really what it is <laughs> It says to share a bad day and not necessarily like to tell you like they happen. <laughs> bad days definitely happen. And we don't necessarily say like the entire day is bad. A lot of it is about emotional regulation. If you guys, which I will be talking about a lot on my channel, have autistic children. My children, I'm just going to talk about my kids, can be overstimulated at times, and some days it could just be they didn't get enough sleep or they didn't sleep well enough or their tummy hurts or they wore tight shoes or shoes that were uncomfortable when we went out and, you know, now their bucket is full and everything is upsetting. So a lot of what is into my kids' schooling is actually an SEP, which is a specialized education program kind of like what IEP is for public school I guess and we have their therapies wrapped into that the OT they actually have a home exercise program when we're having a supposed you know bad day or it is a bad day then we go to that home exercise program and look at what is it that we need to do to help emotional regulation is what we work on a lot and yeah that's a big topic and obviously something I can definitely talk about I'm gonna take some notes here <laughs> so I don't forget but something I can talk about on how we regulate our days because what really matters first is that emotional regulation you're not gonna get anything accomplished and it's not like I gotta teach them and that's my accomplishment it's more about them being able to regulate their emotions themselves eventually to recognize when okay this is too much I'm that detective right now like we're not going to go to the mall where it's really loud and there's lots of people and there's lots of colors and smells and sounds and all of that that's just a nightmare and not a good idea so when we are out in places, I have to always be testing the waters. Like, how is this? How are they doing? This is limited time out. We're going home now, teaching them to 
regulate and notice things around them like that. And it's hard because they, they're not there at all. Having a bad day usually means something like that. And we just stop. We go to a quiet place and regulate and go through our tools, which I will talk about are on this channel too. You don't have to push through <laughs> in a bad day at all. You can reset and just say, tomorrow's going to be better or tonight. I mean, it just, it totally depends, right? There's some tips I can, I can share with you guys what I've learned along the way anyway. Okay. The next one is how do you as a homeschool mom recharge <laughs> like self-care? Well, I can tell you doing this channel actually helps me with self-care because I'm able to take some of those things, those energies or those those bad days like we were talking about and turn that into maybe something I can create you know a video on or maybe something that I can share on how we you know change our day around or how we just take a pause and come back the next day you know so self-care is to me talking to you guys and and talking to my other homeschool friends and which I talk to sometimes on on video chats and sometimes I go to the thrift store <laughs> we cannot say that shopping is not <laughs> not a um self-care <laughs> thing <laughs> yeah so <laughs> thrifting is one of the ways I love to do it because not only are we homeschoolers and and artists and stuff. I'm also a doll creator. I I make my own cloth dolls. So that's a form of art. So I'm always looking at the thrift store for art supplies for kids, which is an amazing place to look for art supplies because yeah, people might have picked up like, oh, I'm going to do this art and then they don't. <laughs> and so it ends up at the thrift store. Some of it never used. Anyway, I've done videos on that too because yeah it's pretty abundant where we are and it's it's really great place to find that stuff and it's fun because you can find like random things and and you're like oh this gives me a great idea <laughs> to make something you know anyhow so thrifting is like <laughs> one of my favorite things to do or just drinking tea and coffee like I love tea and I love coffee learning about my heritage like that's one of my deep dive and special interests that I love learning is about family our family you know and our family heritage and stuff so I have a lots of self-care things it's just mainly finding that time or that space <laughs> so the last one says share free resource that you love there's actually many. <laughs> we use a lot of free resources, actually. And of course, it always depends on where you live. I have found on our local library website, there are many free resources, including a subscription to Creative Bug, I think that is. It's one of those online classes of like knitting and crocheting and art drawing and like all of this stuff. Through our library, they offer a free subscription to it. So that's awesome. And then also they have for languages. One of my kids wanted to learn Japanese. And so they had the Rosetta Stone, I believe, Japanese on there for free. So you never know actually what your library has for free resources like that until you go and look, right? <laughs> Besides that, there are museums online, like art museums history museums where you can take virtual tours. So I've done that where I set up my laptop and the kids sit at the table and we can click through and like like we're actually there and looking at museum art. Of course, it only lasts so long with my kids, but it's still really cool because then I get to into it and I'm like, wow. And it, they do it from different angles, like you're standing there. Uh, looking at the art. That is a really cool one. There is a website online, which I will link below. I think it's a blog post. Somebody wrote about all of these secular resources for homeschool. So it does include a lot of that free stuff. Yeah, there is a lot available online. And that is after the 
after 2020, a lot of things went online like that. So NASA has, you know, free resources for science and homeschooling and, and schools in general for learning stuff like, like science. There's so many websites that have this free, you know, stuff available. And for us, it's big because, you know, we have children who can't necessarily go to field trips, go in person to big kid events, stuff like that. Having stuff online really helps our family and is really inclusive to our family. So that's a resource that I'm always looking for is stuff that we can go online and do as well as the stuff in person. I will definitely live that below. So thanks for watching and hanging out with me today. And yeah, please watch the playlist below with the other moms who collaborated on this topic. And subscribe and stick around and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.